Hi, I'm Jenny Olson, a queer filmmaker, historian, archivist. I read The Celluloid Closet in 1986 when I was in college at the University of Minnesota. I was a film studies major, and it's kind of hard to believe, but I was not out, and it just changed my life. It prompted me to start a gay film series on campus called Lavender Images. And that was how I came out, by coming into the LGBT community in Minneapolis through programming this film festival. The power of seeing ourselves on screen, for me, was life-changing, if not life-saving. I had always loved Hollywood movies, in particular classic Hollywood movies, since I was a little kid. And so it was the way out for me. <laughs> I moved to San Francisco in 1991 to be a co-director of the San Francisco International LGBT Film Festival, which at that time was the biggest job in the world in my little tiny chosen profession of being a queer film programmer. And then in the mid-90s, I left Frameline and was one of the co-founders of PlanetOut.com. I got to do a lot of stuff around queer film exhibition there. We did little tiny pixelated streaming films back before the existence of YouTube. I do feel very informed as a filmmaker by all of my other aspects of my career. As a curator, I feel like I saw hundreds, if not thousands, of films. I never learned how to make films. I learned how to watch them. It is also why my films are so much about film. I become lost in her train of thought. I feel tender about the way she pronounces her words, the way she laughs, the way she seems so far away from me. It was 1997 that I made my first actual 16 millimeter short, Blue Diary. She doesn't ask me questions beyond certain conventional inquiries. And then she's not particularly intent on listening to my answers. My cinematographer for Blue Diary was William E. Jones. Bill's film Massillon was the absolute formative film for me that made me realize that I wanted to make work, and specifically that I wanted to make 16 millimeter urban landscape voiceover essay films. What I'm trying to make happen is to connect you to your own feelings. I think this is true of experimental film in general. It's about the viewer in a way that's different than conventional narrative or conventional documentary. Literally, it's like, okay, here's a shot that's completely silent for two minutes. How do you feel? What's going on inside of you? 